basically the most important stories that are happening right now. And we're going to do it in a short format. So I hope that you guys share this out. Uh, remember that all of the articles, any kind of tweet, video, picture, document that I reference in today's video will be available uh, at the show links right down below. There is a source for that at marfuglenews.com. Uh, we're going to talk about TikTok, of course. Uh, TikTok CEO day in Congress was a, quote, disaster. That means the app will still likely get banned or sold, Wall Street says. It says that the TikTok CEO Zhao Zhu Chu uh, testified in front of Congress Thursday as calls for a forced sale of its U.S. business or a ban are on the rise. It says that the hearing was meant to give TikTok the chance to uh, assuage uh, lawmakers' concerns about the social media app's data privacy policies and its ties to China via its parent company, ByteDance. Now, we've talked about their terms of service. They even do uh, the keystroke logging, which means that, uh, you know, if, if you have that uh, app on your phone, they may even be, uh, you know, recording your passwords and things to other sites and all sorts of other crazy things that are in their terms of service. Uh, many people believe that they are spying and using that to not only get video from all over the world, but also to get information and a, basically a bio on every single citizen that is using it, whether it be U.S. or any other country. Uh, but most people kind of overlook that. Most people are using it as much as they can because it is a very addicting app. It says, quote, we would characterize te uh, today's testimony by TikTok CEO Zhao Zhu Chu in the Beltway as a disaster moment that will likely catalyze more calls by lawmakers by the White House to look and ban TikTok within the U.S. if the company does not look to spin off and force a sale from Chinese parent ByteDance, uh, said Dan Ives. So one thing that I have heard a lot of people saying is that the fact that they are going after this is also because they can't control uh, what happens on uh, that platform, as far as what happens on TikTok, that that is one of the few social <clears throat> uh, platforms that they don't control what is said. Um, as far as, you know, all of the other social media platforms, uh, except for some say Twitter. Again, we don't know that. I know that DHS and stuff is monitoring Twitter as well. But most of the platforms have people in their ears telling them what to do, who to delete and all of that. We know that for a fact now that we've heard all of these this testimony from the Twitter files and everything else. Uh, but or at least I know that I, that's what I believe. And then uh, the the president uh, JB administration is pushing for the sale of TikTok's American business and threatening a ban if it doesn't happen. Thursday's hearing likely gave lawmakers even more fuel for the argument in favor of a sale or a ban. So that was probably the least uh, least scary here as far as TikTok. They do believe that they are spying on us. They're spying on the world. Uh, that is what uh, many of my friends said from the very beginning. Um, do you believe that as well? Let me know in the comments down below. But that is probably the least scary. If you are easily uh, freaked out, then you probably want to tune out. Again, my goal is not to make you afraid. It's to let you know about some of the most important things. If you look at the big picture right now, it says that China threatens consequences over the U.S. warship's action in the South China Sea. China threatened serious consequences Friday after the United States Navy sailed a destroyer around the disputed Paracel Islands in the South China Sea for the second day in a row. In a move, Beijing claimed was a violation of its sovereignty and security. The warning comes amid growing tensions between China and the United States in the region, and Washington pushes back, uh, pushes back at Beijing's growingly assertive posture in the South China Sea, a strategic waterway it claims virtually in its entirety. The warning comes uh, again on Thursday after the U.S. sailed the USS Milius guided missile destroyer near the Paracel Islands. China said that its Navy and Air Force had forced the American vessel away, a claim that the U.S. military denied. We actually talked about that almost any time that they follow along our, our any kind of ship that goes through there. They basically say that they chased it away, but what chased it away means is that they just essentially followed them, kept bothering them, saying, this is China, you know, airspace, this is China waters, uh, get out. And basically the U.S. does what they want and sails right through. And then from there, and they say that they chased them away. I don't think that's what happened, but that's just my opinion. What's yours? It says the U.S. on Friday sailed the ship again in the vicinity of the islands, which are occupied by China, but also claimed by Taiwan and Vietnam as part of what's called the Freedom of Navigation Operation, challenging requirements from all three nations requiring either advanced notification or permission before a military vessel sails by. Quote, unlawful and sweeping maritime claims in the South China Sea 
pose a serious threat to the freedom of the seas, including the freedoms of navigation and overflight, free trade, and unimpeded commerce, a freedom of economic opportunity for South China Sea literal nations. That is what the 7th Fleet spokesp uh, spokesperson, Lieutenant J.G. Luca Bakik, said in an emailed statement. The United States challenges excessive maritime claims around the world, regardless of identity of the claimant. This is the same rigmarole, the same thing we've heard every single time this thing happens. Uh, but this is definitely getting to the point where you see the main narrative pushing against China and that they're getting the American people uh, pushing against this. It's kind of like half of our government says that they're bad and then the other half doesn't say a word uh, very suspiciously. And then it says missiles slam into another U.S. base in Syria. Remember back militants retaliate after U.S. airstrikes. So if you were watching the shows the last couple of days over on Marfugal uh, TV, you would know that there was a strike and it was done by the U.S. and approved by our uh, JB. And then it says that Iran Mag fighters fired three missiles at a U.S. military base in Northeast Syria after after uh, President JB launched a series of retaliatory uh, retaliatory airstrikes in response to a deadly Iran suicide drone attack that killed an American contractor. It said that the Iran Bag groups targeted the U.S. base at the Al Omar oil field in, in the Northeast with the missile attack at around 11 a.m. on Friday morning. Two missiles fell in the oil field without causing damage, while the third landed on a civilian house nearby. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that it was unclear whether the strikes had caused any casualties. The militants launched the strikes just hours after President uh, JB ordered the U.S. Central Command forces to launch precision airstrikes against facilities used by groups affiliated with the IRGC, uh, taking the lives of 11 pro Iran fighters. So that was that. And then you have, of course, Russian fighter jets circling a U.S. airbase in Syria a week after a fiery confrontation, it says, between, of course, the Russian jets and this Reaper drone. Russian fighter jets have encircled the U.S. airbase in Syria dozens of times in March, potentially heightening tensions after the U.S. drone was down following a confrontation with the Russian fighter uh, over the Black Sea last week. It says, according to a report, uh, that it says Russian aircraft have zoomed in over a U.S. airbase in Syria more than 25 times this month, violating a 2019 agreement between the U.S. and Russia over the use of the airspace over Syria, which in areas which the, each country has military outposts. Lieutenant General Alexis Gorenvich uh, said that the Combined Forces Air Component Commander for U.S. Central Command told that the outlet that the flights have increased during the month of March. So this very well could be, you know, they're just put, putting out this, see, seeing what uh, sticks as far as the, you know, what what is happening right now. We're not too sure, but uh, it is definitely pointing towards that things are heating up. It says on March 14th, two Russian Su-27 fighter jets approached, poured fuel on, and then clipped the U.S. MQ-9 Reaper drone, that whole circus. Of course, it was an unmanned drone. If it wasn't, this wouldn't have happened. And as I said, if this did cause anything worse even in the long term if we looked back at history books and said that that was what started it all that would be the stupidest fantastic freddy ever um, and i don't think that that is it again uh, most people believe that there will be a large event to get us involved in a conflict uh, kind of like a pearl harbor kind of like a 2001 uh, kind of like a, a gulf of tonkin type of thing if we are to get into a massive conflict and really go full bore into this thing it says that Dmitry Medvedev, Deputy uh, Secretary of the Security Council and former Prime Minister, said in an interview with Russian propagandists that to achieve goals in the conflict, that the Russian army may not only go to Kiev, but also to Lviv. It says, quote, for Medvedev, nothing could be ruled out here if we have to go to Kiev, and then if we have to go to, to uh, Kiev, and if we have to go to Lviv, that we will go to Lviv in order to destroy this infection. According to Medvedev, the Russian leadership wants to achieve all goals in its war against UKR. Medvedev calls this the defense of its territories. In the broadest sense of the word, it is necessary to create a sanitary ship, uh, san sanitary strip, basically clear out, clear out all of the folks there. Medvedev pointed out that once again, Russia is not fighting against UKR, but against NATO. I will only say one thing, something that is already obvious. The Russian Federation is not at war with UKR. Our country is at war with NATO's 3.6 million strong army. So he is straight up saying that it is a conflict with NATO and not with UKR. Uh, everything is, is really 
really becoming kind of crazy right now. NATO is adding 300,000 to the borders of Russia. Uh, there are a lot of rumors happening right now in all of the border countries. Of course, they have anti-tank measures put up in Poland. They have the Patriot system there as well that was given to them by Germany. You have them digging trenches not only in Romania, but in at least two other countries as well. Uh, I don't believe that that is covered, but uh, one of our really awesome Fugel fam, who is actually in that division, uh, said that that is actually a much broader operation, and I believe uh, that he is telling the truth. Again, uh, with that, if they are digging trenches on all of the border, yes, you could say that's a contingency plan, but I think it is because they are actually preparing for something to go down. Um, it, they In the UK, there's the very strange event we just covered on the last video over on this channel, which is that uh, they're doing the emergency alert system in the UK on April 23rd, and that is going to go out to pretty much every phone nationwide. Uh, many people are looking at that date and trying to see, you know, what what is in store for uh, April, especially since all of the different anniversaries that are coming up. So make sure to join us. We have much more to talk about on tonight's show. This is a short shareable video for that reason, so make sure to share it out. Make sure to also go over to our website, check out any of our affiliates. If there is something that you already wanted to get, like a generator, if you get it through us, not only will you get a discount, but you'll help us. We are independent. We're on our own. Uh, we are covering controversial subjects, so we're not treated well. So make sure to go over there and check out all of the affiliates on the right side of any of our show pages. Just look for the thumbnail for this picture once you hit that show note link and you will find today's show with all of the sources and a bibliography of everything we just talked about. We have much more. We save the best for our other show. So make sure to join us over on Marfugal TV, our sister channel, for the two-hour live show where we go over all of this in detail. I'll see you guys, and thank you for those of you who, uh, I, I believe a couple Super Chats came in. I will make sure to thank you on the other show. Thank you, Sean Penrod, and I appreciate you. Have a good night, guys. Be safe. Be prepared. Make sure to go check out MarfugalNews.com and Marf out.